So uh, years ago, I did a demo on what's called a dynamic dropdown, where you just add uh, if if something isn't in one of your dropdowns, you can just sort of add it right there in the project, and I'll add to the dropdown. But this is I, I just pirated that project that I built and turned it into something for uh, this module. So the module is cross project piping. And basically it allows you to pipe values from one field in one project into another field, in another project. Note that the, and you can read the documentation, but this pretty much says it all. The projects have to be matched on one, some field. Like um, I'll show you that I'm, I'm using a name. And once I select a name, then it will uh, pull all the data from my second project into my first project. Uh, so the the set was there a question no okay so i keep hearing somebody say something oh, oh okay all right so there's going to be a drop down example it's it's sort of like i just built this um very simple uh contact thing where i didn't even change the name of the instrument it just goes to show how old this other one was anyway name address city state zip okay so no big deal and what i'll do is i'll take the name and make that my uh third party third um variable sort of thing that's gonna match in the two projects so here in my drop down example i've got a name field and i'll just take this out so nobody gets confused so i've got a name here for this and then i've got my address city state zip but i want to pull it from that first project so you put them the external module on the project that you want to um, connect to. So where you want to dump your data. So I want to dump my data into this dropdown. So I put my cross project piping here. And then I configure this and, and it, you don't have to do, um, it, it, you can do more than one uh, field that you're bringing across, but you're starting with identifying what is your source project. So the source project is the one that you're going to pipe from. So we're going to bring all those that contact information from that contact test once I select a name. So the matching field, and this is what's going to drive everything, is that name field and the variable names. Uh, in this case, match. If they didn't, you would um, indicate that here, what are the matching fields for this? But then once I, I do this, the, and this is just remember defining the project, then we're defining the fields. So I already matched the variable names to make it easy. Uh, so address city, state, and zip. And you know, there's more, um customizations that you can do but just on the most basic level this is all we're going to see if we can do so I'll just cancel out of that since i already configured it and then let's go to the record status dashboard and i'll add a new record and my drop down well let's Take a look at this. My drop down, I wanted to use all the names that exist in that contact test, right? So this is 
a dy dynamic SQL thing that we would have to do for you, right? So if you look at this, these are the people that I have entered into that contact test. They're the only names. And if you look at it, you would see a dynamic query, but I don't think you can see any of this. So we have to build this for you, but it takes two minutes for us to build that, to pull those names in. So again, this is tying these two in. It's directly using these names. When I pull up a name, if I pull up Carol, and, oh, I better go to an actual record and not play around in the design. So if I pull up Carol and then I hit save and stay, this is all, this is always kind of one of those things that I think we could put a button on here or something, but a lot of times I'll just add a text box here, not a text box like this, but just like something that says, please make sure that you click on save and stay. But once you hit save and stay, then it causes everything to to run and then it fills in everything you need. And one of the values of this is it's actually filling in fields. It's not just piping uh, something that you can't use. Now, if you wanted to do an uh, some kind of report using Tucson and find the metrics on how many uh, participants you had from Tucson, I mean, you have that value in the field. Or if you want to look at zip codes, you're getting that not just piped in text into some uh, label, which is commonly the way we've been using piping, but this allows you to pipe over. And then what I was telling Carol is, so there would be a couple different ways you could maybe add to this drop down but the easiest way i think is if you use bookmarks and if you haven't used bookmarks before then this is a good way to learn about bookmarks bookmarks you set up in um in your project setup area where you add or edit bookmarks and so when you're linking projects, it's nice because you just say, you know, I'm going to link a RedCap project. And then that's all you need to do. I just typed in contact test. Um, this was the, this is the link that it created. And then I created the link label contact test. And that's what shows up here. Um, whenever you do this, I always click on open a new window and I'll show you what that means. It's what whenever you click on a link, instead of wiping out your existing tab and overriding it, it, it takes you to a new tab. So if I'm back here in my record status dashboard and I'm in this record and I see that you know, what I want is not here. Uh, the name is not in the drop down. So I'm going to go to my project bookmark to my contact test. I'm going to add a new record. And I'll put in Pauline. All right. So now she's added here. I come over to my original project. Notice it opened up a new tab when I did that. And I'll just refresh this project. And now if I were to look, Colleen would be there. So it's a way for you to add it it integrates two different projects. If you want to actually bring data over to your first project, then 
you can do that with this cross project piping and it because it actually fills a variable then you can use it in a report or whatever so I think that's the easiest way to add a record and have it show up. There is another uh, method uh, to do this, but that's in a really old video of, uh, I think I did it with colors or something like red or blue and you create another field down here and you just type in the one that you want and then you, have to save your form and then refresh it and then it will show up in the drop down um but i it, because you're pulling in more data i like the link of the project bookmark it makes it easy to uh, add that record just by clicking on that uh, link so that's uh are you able to add that record so that dynamic drop down one, if you add a record into there, is there? So I wouldn't. So the name will only allow what exists in the contact test. Mm, right. Okay. Right. So I can't, I can't add someone here. So it's, with the piping on this uh, dynamic dropdown, and because this field isn't a text box, it's sucking up the names of people off of this other project. You can't add somebody here and then fill all this in i mean this is only okay. meant as to, as a time saver for this project you put it in the other one and then when you pull the name in it all populates so the example kind of was carol's working on a project where there's um somebody's going to want to um contact a doctor and you know, once they contact that they select the doctor that that contacted them they, they want some basic information pulled into this record so you know they can use it easily they don't have to go back and forth between the two projects once they select the name because there's obviously a lot of other uh, fields in this this is just an example of pulling in a little bit of information that you might like but originally the contacts made um, somebody has somebody's referring somebody to a different doctor or whatever and so that you have the contact information embedded in this drop down example project you just select the name you pull them out of your contact uh, database and it populates that other project so I mean, that's that's the value of that. Uh, so you don't have to type it again since you have it in your little second project. And that second project just sits out there and you add to it. And if it's, in this case, it's position-based and you're adding positions to it, then you just keep adding positions and they keep showing up in the dropdowns and they're available. And, you know, you could uh, um, filter... I don't want to get too complicated, but let's say that you had in your contact uh, database um, a specialty and it was cardiology and there's one that's pedi pediatrics. And so in field one up here, you select, um, I'm looking for a cardiologist. Then you come down to your drop down and it will only show you the names of the cardiologist because in your contact test, you have a field that shows what their profession is and you've, or what their specialty is, you've defined them as, as that. And then when we use, we build this SQL statement, we display only those people who uh, have whatever specialty you defined in the field above it. Does that make sense? 
or, yeah. or a be, am I being too obtuse? It makes sense. My only other question is the dynamic drop down project that you have. Are you able to take any of those data points and plug them into the contact test project so they talk to each other, or is it just a one way valve? Well, that's a good question. There should be no reason you can't pipe backwards since you ask. Uh, if if you were going to gather information, but see, this is the thing I was trying to work with Carol on. It, the data has to be just for like in contact test in my record status dashboard, anything that you're going to pipe backwards to this has to have something to do with me in, in this record. So if there was, if if like you had, um, you decided that uh, this person had COVID and that was a field on here, but you're going to pipe it backward from from this, then yeah, you could set that up. But otherwise, I mean, it would have to specifically have to do with me. And then I have to experiment with it, but I don't see any reason why you could. But if I had COVID and I had um, cancer, then that's two different fields. And you'd have to decide how to match that up. So... I don't know if I'm explaining this clearly, but you know, you 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 want the integrity of the data in one database to be clean, and not just trying to shove stuff into this because this is what you're using to fill in. This is I try to tell Carol, it's like one to many. So you've got this one record that can populate many different records in this drop down example but going backwards is not such an easy thing that makes sense okay all right well if you don't have any questions then that's it for today thank you for joining i so appreciate everybody showing up with your questions, Jason, I'll see if I can uh, figure out um, anything regarding your question. And Jen, I'll look in how to prevent those overwrites. Um, make sure that I'm clear on that before I tell you.